Right, this is a Royal Enfield 250 Continental GT whose um, engine alone I had here in uh, probably, well, within the last year or so anyway and I totally stripped and rebuilt it for the owner um, obviously throwing away anything that was worn out and replacing it as required and uh, any good serviceable bits, bits being cleaned up and uh, put back in um, but you never really know when you build an engine when you've just got the engine theoretically it should go in the bike and just start up and go and everything should be fine and so on um, but the owner asked if I could have the whole bike in and just sort of go over it and uh, he had had the engine running um, but just wanted a little bit of setting up and adjustments and uh, a few little things looking at so I've been doing that and uh, among the bits and pieces that he brought with it was uh, a new set of points and a new condenser so I put them in and I timed them up, I put marks so that I could strobe time the ignition timing and so on so that's bang on. Um, what else? The gear selection wasn't good on it, um, there's not much range of movement there for that lever between the exhaust pipe and the kickstart, um, but what I found was the movement required to make the changes was more than was available for the lever and hopefully we can just see it there in that gear lever originally the linkage mated up with that hole at the furthest point away from where it pivots so I drilled another hole closer to it so that reduced the travel necessary to make the gear changes and I also adjusted the angle of the mechanism and made it more sort of parallel and closer to 90 degrees than it was before so that should help as well even that wasp seems to approve um yeah basically i've just gone over a few things um the clip on handlebars weren't quite lined up properly with each other so i sorted that out quite a lot of little things um i've moved the front brake arm around a couple of splines on its shaft there to get better operating angle and not have too much cable bunched up all little things really um, and now I'm at the point where I'm ready to try it out and uh, take it for a run so I'm gonna go and put my jacket and stuff on now and we'll take it for a ride we'll do a, a short loop I don't think I'll go as far as a roundabout this time I'll probably come down the hill and turn left and come back because this engine is essentially brand new it needs running in so um, we won't be seeing how fast it goes or anything like that today um, I'll just be satisfied if it runs nicely and uh, selects all the gears and so on and rides okay and comes back hopefully with no smoke rattles or leaks that'll do me so um, I'm gonna get myself ready and uh, I'll have to work out a way of getting the camera angle sorted on this one because I'm going to be hunched over the tank so I may have to stuff all sorts of things down my jacket to tilt the camera but hopefully I'll get a good camera angle and uh, we'll be able to see where we're going and how it's going so uh, I'll get ready and we'll go for a ride shortly okay I'm not sure how this is going to turn out at all because I'm standing here with my camera strapped around my chest and I've got my hoodie fleece stuffed down the front of my jacket I look like I'm pregnant but it's all to try and get a decent camera angle on this machine while I'm crouched over the tank holding onto those clip-on handlebars. So uh, here we go on that little 250 Royal Enfield Continental GT. And like I said uh, in my talk about it beforehand, I'm not going to be going fast on this one. So uh, any speed freaks, you might be a bit disappointed, but the engine is as new and it needs to be running and treated with a bit of care to begin with. <clears throat> if we can do this little loop without any drama, leaks, smoke, rattles, and get all the gears and get safely round, That'll do for me, that'll, that'll be an achievement, a target met. So, let's see what happens. Take a little fuel up. I don't know what you folks can see while I'm doing this. I'm hoping that we'll see the view ahead. But clearly, I'm going to be looking at my nose. Me. 
maybe maybe it might even start for us in a minute Well, the gearbox is showing me up for certain, but I'll carry on.
Right, I think at this point I'd better explain that I'd set this gear change mechanism up with the bike propped up with the back wheel off the ground, turning the wheel and everything felt and worked fine. I've even done a few trips up and down the lane local to my house and it felt fine. I wouldn't have really brought it out if I thought it was going to be like this, but uh, obviously needs more looking at, but let's carry on anyway. Here from top changing down, it's been a bit of an ass. Got it that time. Missed it that time.
Well, there we are. You can't expect everything to be just right straight away first time round. I think the issue we've got there is actually going through the gearbox it's doing the changes fine um, upwards and downwards except when going from top down to third gear we've got a four speed gearbox on this one um, and it's actually when you go down from fourth to try and get third it quite often over selects it goes too far and it ends up in a neutral between third and second so um, whether we adjust that out but it may affect the selection of the other gears Hopefully not. There's a little um, linkage inside behind this cover with a turnbuckle threaded adjuster on it and even half a turn can make a tremendous difference. It's, it's that hair triggered and that fine the adjustment. We've also got a little bit of an oil leak there to deal with. Um, but it kept running, it ran okay. Um, no nasty noises or anything. The engine stopped before I got a chance to walk around with the camera and show that there was no smoke, but I think that's all alright. Anyway, back to the workshop, do a little bit more and uh, try it again when I think I'm onto something.